Oh, thank you. I love a virtual round of applause. What a wonderful thing. Um, right. So my talk today, I'm trying to answer what makes TikTok tick. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what this adorable, cute girl is thinking. I don't know. And, you know, when I first went on the uh, platform, I felt the same. It, it felt random, spontaneous. It felt unusual, it felt crazy, it felt like a different world. So you've probably heard a lot of this today. I wanna to share some facts. I wanna start with some facts. Okay, we know TikTok available all around the world, 1 billion plus active users, 100 million of those are in the US, downloaded 2.6 billion plus times. There's only what, 7 billion people on the planet. TikTok has scale. We often hear a lot about scale and as marketeers, we love scale, right? We can reach lots of people uh, at our fingertips, but we don't talk a lot about depth. You know, TikTok is rich and full of depth. You know, the average person opens it up eight times a day. The average person is active 52 minutes per day. And that blows my mind. That's not the person who's obsessed or addicted to the platform. That is the average user spends 52 minutes on the platform consuming very short form content. By contrast, allegedly, the Beatles wrote yesterday in less than an hour, right? The same amount of time the average user spends on TikTok a day. And that's, let's not get started on younger people. Teens considerably more spend a lot of time on TikTok. I could speak and I'm sure you can all relate to anecdotes of how much influence this has on our families, our children, our nieces, our nephews' life. But what is the most staggering fact when I think about TikTok's depth is that 83% of users have posted a video globally. 83%, four out of five people are active. These are not passive users. These are people that are immersed and actively participating on the platform. So I know what you're thinking. You know, you're probably confused. You're thinking, why, if all these things are true, haven't brands spent more time, effort, resource, and why don't they care more about TikTok? Well, you know what? I am equally as confused as you, but I have some theories on why that may be. I think first and foremost, brands like people, we're scared of the unknown. We like to work in known truths. We like to work in absolutes. And TikTok, when you think about absolutes, can be a scary place on the surface, right? I think the second thing to relate to, industries, brands, they work in herds, right? I can't count the number of times that a brand has come to us and said, hey, you know, um, we want to do something innovative. We want to be the first to market to do this, but we also want three of our competitors to have done that first, right? It's so contradictory. We work in herds. We like to have evidence from those around us, those like us. And an offshoot of that, the third reason is we all like answers before we will act. We like to connect dots as marketeers. And you can all see this picture, right? This is clearly a picture of a dog. Clearly not a dog. It is an elephant, but... You know, you don't need to have all the dots connected <laughs> in order to see that it's an elephant. You can see it's an elephant, right? And that's how we have to think about TikTok. But let me caveat that. We are four years into this since TikTok, formerly musically, we can connect some dots. So I want to kind of just speak to their success and give you two major observations that I think are powering this meteoric rise. TikTok, first major advantage. Um, they made it offensively easy to share content. You know, I don't know, like, if you go onto Facebook today, it's actually quite difficult to share something that you have discovered or found in Facebook outside the app on another platform. And the same can be said for pretty much every other platform. TikTok didn't treat other platforms like competitors. They treat them like platforms and marketing vehicles. And as a result, they made their user experience on the app 
two clicks to share to basically your entire social ecosystem. And that is one of the reasons why our news feeds for years have been flooded with TikTok watermark videos. Phenomenal advantage that they gain. The second major advantage relates to the product itself. Um, unlike most social platforms, with TikTok, you don't need an audience. You don't need a following to be seen. And, you know, that seems crazy, right? You don't need an audience. You don't need a following to see them. I'm sure you've heard a lot about this today from prior talks, but that's because of the For You page, which is the most advanced, sophisticated, powerful algorithm or one of them that the world has ever seen. And, you know, in TikTok's words, that algorithm can take you from zero to hero at the speed of culture. Again, I stole that phrase from them specifically, but you can grow really, really quickly. You know, many of you, if you're familiar with TikTok, were, may have heard of Charlie DeMeo. Back in May 2019, Charlie did not have a TikTok account. She had no followers, no audience. Fast forward to today, she has over 108 million people at her fingertips. I believe Charlie is 19 years old and she has 108 million people at her fingertips. Okay, people can go from zero to global superstar in no time. Okay, what about brands? Well, Red Bull. Red Bull are a brand that we all applaud for their uh, TikTok activity. And of course we applaud them, like Red Bull throw people out of spaceships. Like <laughs> That's, a, that's a, a recipe for success on TikTok. But if you listen to their social media managers, this is a social media manager from the UK. I screen grabbed this some time back because I found it fascinating. You know, he spoke about going from zero to 100,000 in terms of audience size within 56 days. And he contrasted that, gave the context, it took them five and a half years to gain 350,000 followers on Instagram. Huge difference. He last week tweeted again, I feel like I'm stalking this guy, but he tweeted again to say that one, they hit the 1 million follower mark on the UK Red Bull page. He's incredibly proud of that milestone. Under nine months, there isn't a brand that achieved such phenomenal success organically through consistency in that manner. That opportunity existed seven years ago on social media. It didn't exist today until TikTok allowed it to exist. Okay, I know what you're thinking, Red Bull. Of course they can do very well on TikTok, it's Red Bull. Well, what about this brand, Little Moons? Um, you may have heard of Little Moons in the UK, you may or may not, it could have been a talking point of today, but Little Moons, they sell these little ice cream matcha, <laughs> matcha flavored, uh, you know, ice creams. Um, the business existed for some time, I believe, some years now, a small to medium business that sells in supermarkets across the United Kingdom. They go onto TikTok, they launch TikTok, they gift creators, they do some activity, and it explodes their business. Publishers start talking about their success, and they report that they saw a 700% increase in their sales selling out of all supermarkets. Insanity. They've existed for years upon years. I'm sure they've put a lot more effort into other platforms. And TikTok has made them go from zero to hero like that. And you may be thinking, you know, what, what, um, what was the catalyst for this? What revolutionary strategy did they deploy that meant they could increase their sales 700%? We would all probably like that. I would love a 700% increase in our sales this year. Okay, I'm going to play you a brief clip. It all started with my mom met my dad and they fell in love and they had me. Hi, I'm Ryan. In my life, it's kind of crazy. It all started when my mom met my dad. So as you can see, inherently TikTok, random, leveraging music, sounds, trends, cuteness, um, you know the tactic that really revolutioned them? Yes, they used the paid product. Um, yes, they had been using TikTok for some time, but the catalyst was a, a large scale gifting program, giving creators the opportunity to create with their product. And like most network effects, it's spread like wildfire. So the question I ask you, when's the best time 
to care about TikTok. When should you care about TikTok? Well, it was in the famous words of the Beatles, it was yesterday, today's the next best thing, okay? So my job today, I'm gonna to spend five to 10 minutes giving you uh, the answers to what makes TikTok tick. I'm gonna dispel four myths that I believe are holding brands, businesses, and people back from using TikTok. And I'm gonna share five tips that will hopefully empower you to act now. Um, in terms of anyone not familiar with social chain, we get some nice things said about us in the media. Um, Buzzfeed said we're taking over. My favorite came from the Huffington Post. They uh, called us the social media Illuminati. Um, I don't know if it was good or bad, but I liked it anyway. Um, and it all started six years ago. We started in Manchester in the United Kingdom. Um, and our first ever client was an app, an app called Tippy Tap, a little addictive, you know, playful game. And they came to us with a brief. They didn't have a big budget, um, but they had big ambitions. They wanted us to get millions of downloads of their app with little to no cost. If that's your brief, you have to get incredibly creative. You have to look for where opportunity exists now and you have to do things differently to what the rest of the industry is doing. And that's what we did. We told the world not to download this app. We talked about it in a contextually relevant way all across relevant platforms of the internet. And they had millions of downloads in the first week because our success has been built on understanding where opportunity exists and helping brands take advantage. And that advantage is in TikTok. And you know, six years on, we became one of Britain's most influential companies, according to the Times. We have offices all around the world. We employ over 700 people. And our job is to keep brands at the forefront of what is possible. Um, Shameless plug. Anyway, back to ghost busting or myth busting. Myth number one, you've all heard this. TikTok's for kids. TikTok is for kids. Um, it, you know, it used to be for kids, absolutely used to be for kids. Um, if you believe that today, you are wrong. 86% of users globally are over 24 years old. I'm not suggesting a 24 year old is um, an elder of society, but it's not for kids. Um, it's such a rich, deep audience set. And when we look at audience growth, um, COVID or the, the tragedy of COVID was almost a perfect storm for this accelerated growth. But what we've seen is huge correlations between families, numbers of kids in households, and the number of parents joining the platform. Really rich, diverse uh, audience. And if you want to speak to anyone under the age of 50, TikTok presents that opportunity. Myth number two. My products won't work on TikTok, or there isn't a role for me. If you believe that because you're a insurance company, again, you were wrong. Uh, almost every brand has a place on TikTok. You know, it is such an eclectic mix of things and subculture and niches from alcohol, hair care, food, snacks, pets, animals, skincare, health, you name it, it is there. Okay, third commonly held belief. It's all dance videos and cute pets. Um, there are a lot of dance videos and there are so many cute pets. However, that's not necessarily true. Um, it is a rich, rich, rich creative environment and dance and music is inherent to the platform. It's inherent to the DNA, but it's certainly a place of, of kind of subcultures and niches. And look, if you were a garden center and you were not on TikTok, you were missing a trick, you wouldn't believe the size of the world that is plant TikTok, how you can immerse yourself in that world. If you have a passion point of pottery, it is there. Whatever it is you like, you as an individual or business can take advantage of that. And last myth is short form content doesn't add value. Um, if any of you are familiar, or I'm sure you are familiar with the Wall Street Bets fiasco, they said that about memes. Memes have no power. Wall Street Bets, <laughs> Reddit, disagree with you. The internet has never lost. And look, the average user spends a lot of time on the platform. Yes, short form content is short, but the amount of usage and the amount of consumption is long and incredibly deep. So for me, this is not a debate whether TikTok can help your business or if your customers are there, really. The question is, are you and your partners creative and agile enough to try and take advantage? And it requires bravery. You have to be brave. So I wanna give you my five top tips to being brave. And I'm sure some of them um, <laughs> will have been spoken about today, uh, but I'll go anyway, right? Tip number one, know the platform understand what your niche is. And let me explain. 
you know, before deciding what's the right strategy for the brand, please go spend time on the platform, right? Explore different hashtags, sounds, things that are related to your industry and brand. And this is for the main reason that you're trying to train your algorithm. You're feeding your For You page in order to serve you things that are relevant to your world. So go spend time, go use it, and this will be your inspiration for your creativity. So research your category, identify influential creators, people in your space that you can potentially work with, and engage with content. Learn your For You page to be for you. Number two, identify and develop your TikTok persona. And this is a thing as a brand that a lot of brands uh, you know, are trying to humanize who they are. This is so important and on TikTok. You know, more than any other social platform, maybe with the exclusion of Twitter, um, Twitter in terms of a personality, but TikTok calls for brands to have a personality. And you have to collaborate with people, meaning your employees, yourself, you know, collaborators, creators, people in your world. It is a people over product platform. So always put people at the front of things that you are creating. If you don't, you won't be successful. Checklist for number two, develop a personality, figure out what that might be. Make sure there's a face on everything that you do. And that can be either influencers, creators, or that can be just you and your team. And, you know, play around, develop. Okay, top tip number three, um, be brave. Be native and just post, 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 post. The reason I say post, 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 post is TikTok does not res uh, restrict your reach according to post volumes. Other platforms will tell you they don't restrict your reach, but other platforms are often predicated on quality and quality doesn't mean production value, quality means relevance, but other platforms are predicated on the right quality at the right time. TikTok is not like that. It has a, you know, a very different sort of life cycle in every sense of the word. So it's about figuring out efficient ways to create lots of content. So, you know, if there's a relevant trend, brief it, create it, post it, and, and be patient. Because as I said, the life cycle of a, a, a trend is very different to what you would expect, for example, in a native feed Instagram post where 80% of your engagements are gonna come within two hours. TikTok is different. Of course, velocity of enjoyment, engagement matters. But um, we've seen, uh, you know, branded content res have resurgence after resurgence after resurgence. So just be pa patient, be consistent. And the most important thing whenever you create anything is use the native tools. TikTok has the most phenomenal product features, whether it's their live functionality, whether it's their creator suite, it is incredible. And I actually think we will look back in social media history and we will see, uh, you know, the duet feature as uh, a phenomenon like we saw, you know, like, share, all these features that change the way we behave. I think the duet feature is one of those, but it has the most amazing, and in their words, you know, make TikToks, not ads. Be native, drop your brand ego, drop your brand guidelines that are holding you back from creating things that are effective. Um, and be native. And, and look, from my standpoint, there are two ways to, to sort of break down barriers. Um, there are build a strategy and know when you should and shouldn't speak. But they're also kind of just having the willingness to try and experiment and fail. And if you have that philosophy, you can be successful on TikTok. Number four, um, trends. Aim high, ride trends. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, TikTok surprisingly operates a little bit like a, a search engine for trends. There's thousands of trends, sounds, things formulating every single hour. So it's so important that you don't get distracted and that you're intentional and you know you know the things that you want to be associated with which you don't, you could easily get distracted. So find trends that are relevant for you. If you want to kind of hit the mecca or the gold star of social media and get your own branded trend, Think about it in a creative manner, like simple formats work really well. Simple tracks work really well. Simple dances work really well. If you want to create your own branded trend, make sure it's simple and like everything, stay consistent and within your lane. Top tips here, be intentional with a trend, experiment with sound bites and features, particularly if you're wanting to create your own trend. And naturally, of course, you can use the paid product. 
Um, and lastly, consistency. Consistency is, is, is such a superpower, particularly when it's compounded and it will always be a winning strategy in my view. And the last thing, um, I heard the last speaker speaking about this, but again, it's such an important point. I can't reiterate this enough. Um, connect with your community. The community is the platform. They drive the platform and, and look, they are very, very active. This is an active community that want interaction. Um, and look, <laughs> I, I'll not profess to know the language of TikTok. Um, there are way more qualified people than me to know everything that goes on platform, but they have their own language. So learn it, don't be a boomer. Um, final checklist, read the comments, interact with your content. If you care about your customers, show them. Um, and interact with creator content. I saw a fascinating thing that Manscaped did where they were interacting with creators that they gifted in the past and just commenting and speaking with them. And then they would like hijack live streams. I thought it was a phenomenal approach and something more brands should do. Um, and lastly, try and learn TikTok. Learn to speak the new language of the internet. And if you're not using TikTok, uh, you weren't using it yesterday, please use it today. Thank you so much. Here's my email if anyone has any questions. My social handle is just Oliver uh, at Oliver Yonchev. Um, and I will stop screen sharing. Okay. Wow, thanks, Oliver. That was phenomenal. Yeah, some good feedback in the, the chat there. People saying great session. If anyone's got any questions, maybe we can uh, cover a couple of them. Uh, that was really great. And uh, there is a question from uh, Alessandra. She's saying, what about what about length of video? Is there an ideal length for a campaign video? Um, I, I think the more important thing with a video is um, thinking of how people behave. You know, the UX means that you can scroll through a lot of content rapidly, right? So we talk about the first three seconds on social media mattering. I think it's less about the length of the video, but more about, you know, ensuring that those first two seconds um, give you a reason to stay engaged and retain you without you swiping past. I think that's the more important question. But if for a specific under a minute, of course, I, you know, you can go in real holes, uh, you know, you can go down a deep rabbit hole um, of such content. Great. And, uh, you know, in terms of the evolution, you, you've obviously been in, uh, you know, social and TikTok for, for the, from the start. How, are you seeing an evolution in the types of brands that are coming to you? Yeah, initially it was the, the niche, the, the hip, the alternative, and now it's the, you know, I don't know, JP Morgan or, you know, <laughs> Chase Manhattan or, you know, Walmart coming to you? Are you seeing a sort of progression? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the first brands that entered the platform were ones that, uh, you know, saw an opportunity from an entertainment standpoint. So if you were a record label, um, if you were a, a movie studio, if you created entertainment content, you felt you had a role. I think the next adopters were beauty and fashion. Um, I think the beauty industry has been quite slow to react, particularly more um, flagship brands uh, or, or sort of global brands. I, I think emerging brands have certainly been more um, vigilant as early adopters. Then we've seen a huge sweep of FMCG brands um, and success is uh, addictive, right? So we all hear case studies and, you know, for me, it, it's, it's strange. I think this is about all social media. Um, it, we as marketeers, broadly speaking, I came from a traditional marketing background and, you know, there was things that we did that felt more box ticking that weren't substantiated. But, you know, on digital platforms or on new platforms, we put them under a level of scrutiny that we don't other forms of media in the sense that, you know, the barrier to entry to create on TikTok is so low. Like the advice is use the creator suite. If you have a product like whatever this is, this drink here. Like I could just take a picture, look on a trend, play around with it and try. Like it genuinely is that simple. Um, so yeah, I, I, to answer your question, I think we've seen a, tr a shift. More conservative brands are trying, but they are going to fail unless they put the platform and how people behave first. If they try and, you know, be selfish and convey their messages and, you know, it, it's over formalized or conservative, they won't do well on, on the platform. 
And Rialan Igonito is asking, what about hashtags? Uh, are they, are they, do they influence the algorithm? Are they worth, worth, what's your view on hashtags? Yeah, hashtags, well, from a search functionality, I think sounds are more important than hashtags. You know, whether it's a sound or a piece of music. And, you know, the, uh, if you're a brand or a business, the, the catalogue of royalty-free music is quite extensive as well. Um, but hashtags are important, but less so than, of course, on a platform like a Twitter. But um, it works like a search engine in the sense that people will search for certain trends. My advice when it comes to hashtags, if you sell, um, you know, a soda drink, is go like look at affiliated topics around soda, get an understanding of the, the conversational trends uh, and only use maybe two or three. You know, um, it's, it's almost redundant after that point. Great. Well, Oliver, I could uh, could happily chat to you all day. And uh, that was a great Hello. presentation. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And I hope uh, potentially later this year or, or next year, even we can uh, take this event in person and, you know, maybe uh, continue these conversations uh, either in a sort of rooftop bar in New York or uh, by the pool in L.A. or in the hotel conference venue. Um, but that was really great. You're yeah. making me feel nostalgic. Stop it. <laughs> well, no, with, with think, think to the future. And yeah, it was great uh, great having you involved today. And yeah, a lot of great feedback in the chat. And yeah, really appreciate you taking part. Amazing. And, and thank you for your time. Really appreciate this. Great.